Hi guys, Chris here from cncmachineplans.com One of the things I wanted to talk about was setting steps on your machine but also optimizing them so that you get the best travel on your machine um, but also accuracy as well um, so you can generally work out the mathematics on calculating steps but in a perfect world that would be good because you know, if you get parts that are made perfectly then you know the mathematics that you do would equate to travel so for example if you get a you know a ball screw with a five mil pitch on it um, if it turned or was ground or rolled at exactly five mil pitch then you know your mathematics on that would equate to exactly five mil of travel but Unfortunately, it doesn't always work out like that, so you have to optimize it a bit or, or fine-tune it. And this is what I've done on my website. If you go to my website, which is cncmachineplans.com, and go to Steps Calculator, I have done up a calculator here. So this is for working out three different things here. You can calculate your steps per unit, and this is for calculating um, your steps per unit based on whether you're using a, a gear reduction drive, or you can do it with a straight pinion straight on a stepper motor, so direct drive. I've also got servo motor here, but I've also got a steps optimizer. So one of the things which was good about Mark III is that on Mark 3 you can go to settings up the top here and within settings there was a steps per unit axis calibration so what you could do is you could click on that I'm not going to do it now because I don't have it hooked up to my machine but you could put that in you click on that and it brings up a box saying how far do you want your machine to travel so you could put in one inch or 25 mil or however far you wanted it to travel then measure with an indicator say a dial indicator how far you wanted it how far it did travel and then input that and it would work out the steps difference so I'll come back to here I've just gone to Google Images so here's a picture of a ruler so you can put your bit at the start and then you tell it to move say 10 mil here's the next image and then you put that in that's a, an average way of doing it you've got to rely on sight and sort of guess everything in between millimeters it's it's not the most precise way but it, it will give you a, a good baseline the best way to do it is, let's have a look at this one is putting a dial indicator on your axis so here they'll be measuring travel forward and back on the x-axis so they'll be zeroing out the indicator telling machine to move say 10 20 millimeters or one inch or whatever you want it to do and then inputting back into the machine how far it's moved and you do that for each axis so that would be x that would be your z-axis and that would be your y-axis so that's how I would be doing it um, using a dial indicator and that way you can get a, a good correct measurement but you got to establish some sort of baseline um, especially when you're using gear reduction drives so how do we do that well you got to work out your, your pinion pitch diameter now this is really easy to work out if you're using module um, pinions. See, the maths on that is module times tooth of the pinion. So, for example, I'll work off the gear reduction drive I'm using. I'm using a, a 20 tooth pinion, and I'm using a, and it's a module 1.5. So all you have to do is go 20 tooth times 1.5 so the pitch diameter is 30 millimeters if you were using module 2 then it would be 
tooth times two and so on and so forth. So modules are really easy to work out the pinion pitch diameter. So like I said before I'm using a 20 tooth pinion times the module which is a 1.5 what I'm using so that's how I get my 30 millimeter pitch diameter. So I can put 30 straight in there. So on a single revolution of the motor or of the pinion it's going to travel 94 point so on on one full revolution. That's, this is in millimeters. This will also work for inches as well. So for example if I wanted to put one inch then it would say on one revolution it would move 3.141 inches. So it doesn't matter what you put in. It's Like I've set up here it's both metric and imperial. But I'll run through what I've been working off of what my gear reduction drive is. So mine's 30 millimeters. It travels that far in one full revolution. The stepper motor I'm using is a 1.8 degree stepper motor. So that is um, 200 steps per revolution. You've also got 1.2 and 0.9 degrees. So here with 0.9 that would be 400 steps per revolution. Then you got 300 steps per revolution. But the I'd say the most average stepper motor you get is a 1.8 degree. Then for your driver, if you're using gecko drivers or even the um, the lead shine style drivers, then they use, you can set them to 10 times micro stepping, but you can change that. The lead shines you can go eight times, six times, whatever you like, any of those really. But I'll leave it 10 times. So this is what you'd put into Mark III. So if I go back to Mark III and go to Config, motor tuning and steps per unit this is where I'd be putting in steps per unit so my steps per unit is this figure here what I'd be putting in this is based on direct drive now if I have a gear reduction drive so a larger pulley and a smaller pulley so the smaller pulley would be on the stepper motor larger pulley would be down on the same drive as the pinion. You can put that in but finding the larger pulley pitch diameter is a little bit harder. Um, you can generally go to manufacturers and they should have that but if you don't know that you can always just easily put if you know if it's a 3 to 1 reduction or 4 to 1 reduction you can just put 3 in the large one, 1 in the smaller one and then that works it out. So these figures here are based on the same thing. So this is essentially saying it's a three inch pinion, uh, sorry, pulley. So it would travel that far in one full revolution. One, it would travel that far in one full revolution. But three to one reduction, this is your new figure for traveling one millimeter. To find out what your large pulley pitch diameter and to come up with a more accurate steps per unit someone like stock drive parts or any of these guys would carry a chart with pulley dimensions on it so again I'm using a 5 mil pitch HTD or high torque drive pulley I'm using a 60 groove pulley and I've got a 20 groove pulley on my stepper motor with a belt linking them. So here we want the pitch diameter 95.49 is the larger one and I'm using 20 31.83 so if I go 31.83 which is a smaller one and times that by 3 then I've got 95.49 in years gone past I have bought 3 to 1 gear reduction drives but they have been ever so slightly different so where they've said it's 3 to 1 gear reduction the pulley 
on the smaller one might have been 3 or 31.82. So you go that times 3 is 95.46. So it's ever so slightly off. And you know, although it's such a, a small figure, you may not notice it on a, a two, three, four foot table, but on a eight foot table or nine foot table where you've you're getting up to three meters of travel it might equate to being two or three mil out by the end of the travel but in this situation it's exactly three to one in the reduction drive so if I put 95.49 95.49 in here and the other one 31.83 it has got Im imperial here inches you can put those in as well it'll just work it out so 31.83 so here we go the steps hasn't changed because it is exactly three to one gear reduction so this creates a really good baseline this should get you perfect if everything is ground to precision and made properly but in real world testing sometimes you are ever so slightly out um, most of the time you probably wouldn't notice but other times um, you know you, you may notice it on longer travels so that was a really good thing about Mark III is that you could calculate the steps to get the exact precise amount of movement but since Mark IV that little module that little plug-in is disappeared um, if it is here I'd like to know where it is so you know you can go in and you can set up your steps per unit on this one but then how do you optimize it how do you refine it well this is the next little module that I've done on my website is that if you've got this for a baseline you can then copy that and put it that in your current steps per unit and then in Mark 4 or if you're using uh, Linux CNC or any of these others that don't have this fine tuning little plug in, you can do this here as well. But you go up to here and you type in how far you want it to move, say 20. I'm working in millimeters as you can see here. You type in 20, and then you hit go to, and it will move the machine hopefully 20 millimeters. So if I come back here, so I put in here 20 millimeters. How far did it move? So you've put the dial indicator on it, you've told to move 20 millimeters. How far did it move? Well, the dial indicator might say 19.99 millimeters, so it's ever so slightly out. Put that in, hit enter. So what it will do is readjust your and give you new steps so you can see that 63.6619 the new steps is 63.693 etc so it works out exactly what the difference is so if you put that now in your machine you should be a lot closer what I found with working with the original Mark 3 steps per unit that you had to do it two to three maybe four times before it was absolutely precise so what would tend to happen is that you would might get 99.9 .9 for your first movement so you put that in then your next one might be 20.01 so you put that in hit enter and that might be your second reading your third reading might be even closer at 01 another 01 so then you just put your new steps in and then by about your third reading you should be bang on 
exactly how far did it move compared to how far to move should be exactly the same and then you put your new steps in and it's all good so you know like I said before since Mark 4 came out you know I've been looking for that little module in there so that I could work it out precisely um, so I could get the exact travel but since that's gone then that's why I've come up with this so this is free you're welcome to stop by the website www.cncmachineplans.com then click on steps calculator it's very easy to use as I've just shown you and hopefully that gets your machine working even more precise and exactly where you want it to go when you type in the measurements and hopefully everything that you're working on in your CAD and your CAM is now working and cutting to what you want. Alright, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and give me the thumbs up.